All right, so this is our sec second example here of using the Matchbox Recommender tool from Azure ML Studio. Let's create a new experiment, and we're going to recreate from scratch their uh, restaurant recommendation example. So what I want you to do, though, is just go ahead and make a blank experiment. And in the previous one where we recreated their movies example, um, restaurant recommender example, in the previous one we, ex we explored a whole bunch of their... Um, uh, different types of recommendations. In this one, in this video, instead of going through all those types once again, instead I want to show you something different we didn't do in the previous video, which is use uh, feature and customer information. So grab the following data sets. First, we want the uh, restaurant. Oh, sorry, not this one. Not my data sets. Samples. All right, first, we want the restaurant uh, ratings, just like we had last time. But this time, we're also going to grab customer data and feature data, which means data about the restaurant itself. So let me zoom out a bit to make some room here. All right, also this data is already pretty well cleaned. Um, let me show you uh, what it looks like. Uh, so data set visualize. We're gonna skip all of the uh, metadata and um, uh, stuff like that for now because it's this data is already cleaned. It's just not necessary. You can see the prior video for examples of that. And let's go straight to grabbing a split data. And once again, we're going to do a recommender split. And in this one, let's just leave everything as it is. I think this is a smaller data set, so we'll leave the fraction of training only a bit smaller. Pull this one in here. Um, Let's grab a train matchbox recommender. Pull this one in here next. And in this case now, we're going to be able to use all three of our inputs. So in our split, we'll, yeah, let's see, grab this one, pull it into this side. Uh, let's see what this data looks like. See if we can pull it straight in or if we need to do a select columns first. Let's visualize here our customer data. So we've got their user ID. Um, location of where they were when they rated it I'm guessing this is cool so this is stuff you would ask about a person in an app ahead of time and use this it's not unique to each one of their restaurant visits it's unique to each customer are they a smoker how much do they drink uh, what's their dress preference ambience oh this is really cool so if I was using if you're making a restaurant prediction app for someone you'd want to have them fill in all this information so you can use it uh, in your prediction Let's see here, in their example, um, what they actually want us to use. Uh, I want to use all of it. Um, yeah, I'm just going to leave it all in there for now. We might come back in later and filter some of them out, though, if we need to. Let's see what we have here in our restaurant feature data. Cool. Location of the restaurant. Uh, Interesting. I'm not sure. This looks like something we might have to use a linking uh, or join some data for in order to be able to use. Uh, I bet if we've got latitude and longitude, we won't need all this address information. Um, a lot of the rest of it we could use, though. I like price. URL is not going to be useful. Let's get rid of that one. So yeah, let's use a um, let's use a select columns on this one. Select columns and data set, pull that in here, pull that one too. Make sure I've got this one in the right place. This one is item features, yeah, so that's where this comes from. Whereas this one you have row written, it's user features, yeah, so customer data, that's right. So in here, let's uh, select only a few things. We're going to need the place ID to tie it back in later on. Let's grab the latitude, longitude. Um, so we're going to skip name. That's not going to help us. Prediction, address, fax number, obviously we don't need. I think alcohol would be useful. Do they support smoking, dress code? Um, I'm going to leave out accessibility for now because I don't know that we have that. Well, no, let's use it. Price, URL, they didn't have a lot. Our ambience, franchise area, other services. We'll leave it like this for now. Okay, let's see if we have any troubles with this and go ahead and try and run to this point. So
So I left the, the default number of traits and number of recommendation, um, what do they call it? Oh, I forget one second here. There we go. Number of traits, uh, number of, this is prior ratings, it's probably a little high, I don't know. Number of iterations, five. Well, we'll leave it as is for now. See what, see what we can find. So let's view this. Oh, this doesn't do us any good viewing it. It just tells us the parameters it used. So let's pull in instead a score matchbox. Beautiful. So here's where we're going to use our other data sets again. Train goes right here. Uh, split data is going to go right here. What's this one? User features. Perfect. That one goes there. And then uh, this guy right there. Let me make sure item features. Yep. Perfect. All right, let's run this one. And while that's thinking, I'm going to get an evaluate recommender. Oh, I got to wait. All right, I'll pause it here so I don't make you wait too. All right, that one's done. Let's take a look. Okay. Um, item one. And so the difference is we I didn't join in the item names. So we're just getting back the item codes here. Really, if you're going to build this in as an API, I think that's perfectly fine to leave this as an item code because in your programmatically in your code, you could then go query the name of these items if you want. Save yourself some uh, bandwidth when you're calling the API rather than getting the entire restaurant name. So uh, what you could do to see how good this is versus some versus uh, not using this data is pull in that evaluate recommender. Pull this in right here. Then, um, oh no, I don't want to make the same mistake again. This one actually goes to this side. And then it is split data, that's right, that comes in over here on this side. So let's run this and keep track of our score. So this gives us that NDCP or something like that. Uh, higher numbers are better on that one. Let's let that run, then I'll record it. Okay, that's all finished. Let's take a look here. Uh, metric, visualize. All right, 91% or 0 0.910. Let's record that somewhere. Let me just open up an Excel file real quick to write it down. Okay, so this is all customer and item features included. That gets us, come on, there we go. That gets us that one. Now let's rerun this and compare it to, let's start by removing uh, feature data. So notice we don't get the option to see like we did back when we did our regression and, and classification models. We don't get the option to see exactly how, how much each one of these features are contributing to the bottom line. So you're just gonna have to go through and select some columns, remove some and see how that, uh, what's the score called again? I can never remember. NDCG, there we go, that's what I want to label this as. And see how NDCG changes each time. So let's head back here. Let's remove, uh, let's start with restaurant feature data. Let's delete that out of there, rerun this, pause it. All right, let's take a look here. Uh, metric, pretty, is that the same thing? No, pretty close though. So it actually goes up though. Um, that was item features, right? Um, restaurant data excluded. So I think what we're seeing there is kind of like before when we had a lot of um, insignificant uh, or variables that didn't add much uh, prediction, but added actually a lot more error and our R squareds would go up when we remove those. I think that's what we're seeing here. I think there's a bunch of restaurant data that we had included before that we could do without. Um, so, I would actually, before I remove that out entirely, I would go to my select columns and take off several more of those and see if that number goes up. But anyway, let's go ahead and delete here the customer data now and see what difference that makes. Run, let me pause it. Okay, let's see what we get now. Metric 
visualize and it goes up once again customer data excluded so I think what I need here is to go through and remove a bunch of the data in both those I think I have way too many metrics that are actually making it uh, that are hurting it rather than helping it huh so I wonder I'm actually going to try real quick putting some of those back in let me grab customer data again restaurant ratings customer data let's pull that one in here pull it in here and uh, let's actually no sorry first let's grab a select columns let's only include the ones that Microsoft recommended in their example oops there and there I think all they had let me pull it up real quick all they had was user ID, which they'll need later, but um, latitude, longitude, where they were when they made the ratings. They had um, interest and personality. Oops, grab those, bring them over. I have to see what the actual data is on these and what they measured to understand a bit better, but let's run this now and see if that helps. Okay, let's take a look now. Metric, visualize, copy that one. Um, let's call this uh, limited customer data included. All right, so what do we have now here? So uh, if I include, so this is this one right here has customer data in it. And this one has limited customer data in it and it gets a bit better. So yeah, the problem is I've got a bunch with these models. The reason why these went up is because I was including a whole bunch of data that wasn't helping, wasn't significant. So it would sure be nice if I could get some sort of analysis of uh, what data was actually useful. Let's visualize this one. Nope, doesn't help at all. Score model, let's take a look at this one now. Nope. Nothing that they give me to indicate which of those columns that I included are actually helping. So all I can do is go through and try out different combinations of the columns and then come back here to my evaluate recommender and keep recording my NDCG. So let's bring back in that uh, feature data for the individual restaurants and pull in another select columns, copy, paste. Pull this in here, that one there, and that one there. And let's only include the features that they wanted uh, included in their original example of this. Let me pull those up real fast. It is, they want um, place ID, latitude, longitude, and price. Really, is that the only one? I bet there's got to be more than that that's useful. But anyway, let's find out. So let's run this one. Run selected, pause. All right, let's take a look now. Visualize 916. All right. This is limited uh, customer and restaurant data included. All right. Um, we call this customer, uh, this one was actually customer and restaurant data excluded. So this one I got better again. Um, not as good as excluding both of them though. I think what would be useful to help choose which features to use is if we came back here and created a separate experiment that was uh, used like a class, no, I uh, use a, a regression model. Um, probably an ordinal regression model because that's based on a rating and predict, uh, make a, a join or we have the restaurant rating and join it to customer data and then predict restaurant rating um, and use the permutation feature importance tool back here. Uh, back, come on, where are you? There we go. Use this tool right here and maybe an ordinal um, Yeah, ordinal regression 
and then find out which of the customer data features actually affects the R squared of the restaurant ratings. And then use that to help us come back here and decide which columns to select. And then same thing, um, do another model where we take restaurant ratings and tie it to join it with the restaurant feature data and run the same tool to see which, uh, which columns to select. And then that would help us pick the columns right here. Anyway, so here's just another example of the Matchbox recommender using uh, customer and feature data.